It's 4 o'clock on a Monday, and you know what that means, don't you? It's time for another exciting episode of Taxi TV Live! Woohoo! Yeah, baby, we're back. Badder than ever. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the show. Hope you guys had a nice holiday weekend last weekend, and today we are going to do instrumental reviews with none other than Mr. Craig Pilo. <laughs> Last time we had him on, I got so many emails from people saying thank you for having him. His insight was great, uh, and he is great. He's our head screener here at Taxi, and you only get that position when you've uh, earned a lot of gold stars as a regular screener, and then you ascend into... Um, royalty <laughs> so there you are the fresh right. prince of screening right. is, is with us today very good uh, so let's see uh all right so you guys i'm going to double check make sure that we are actually broadcasting and there we are okay all systems are go so it's going to be very very easy today we've got uh, a bunch of stuff on here that you guys sent in by the way worth mentioning liz told me so many people didn't follow this very simple directions um on how to submit your stuff so if you didn't follow directions we couldn't consider it for the show um the shoulder screener is next in line what? oh elvis Oh, <laughs> I'm telling you, back in the day, people used to think that uh, we would occasionally do a shot of, of the room with all the cubicles where the screeners sit, and Elvis was in there, and people used to say, I can't believe Lasco sits out in the room lording over the screeners while they work. How do nice. they work under that kind of pressure? It's like, Great. really? You actually think I own a gold lame suit? No. Um anyway i'm excited uh we're gonna listen to some stuff and craig is gonna just tear it apart no actually <laughs> he's not right? no you won't he's gonna lovingly uh assess what's really working and what could use a little help and do it in uh, his usual awesome professional manner um so let's jump right into it early in the show and do this first one is called Ella's Acoustic Caribbean Carnival, and it's by Michael Godwin. Here we go. say you i you know i wanted to put a basket of fruit on my head and be like carmen miranda for that one <laughs> exactly yeah it definitely had a nice light caribbean feel didn't it 
Yep. Um, um, appropriately titled, I think. Um, I really liked the guitar work. I liked the live sounding instrumentation. And I think that, you know, depending on the references, that could definitely be good for an underscore for some sort of light Caribbean vibe. Um, I definitely thought the groove was repetitive. I, the sounds were good. It sounded relatively live to me, um, as far as the percussion goes anyway. Um, the instrumentation was good. Um, I think rhythmically that one needs to be tightened up a little bit, especially that banjo that came in somewhere. Um, and you could have more defined sections and definitely more build. It, it was very good, but and it didn't feel too long. I think the duration on that one is about two minutes. Am I wrong? Uh, uh, so two minutes and one good. second. So you were off yeah. by a second, Craig. The duration was pretty good, but um, <laughs> the, the duration was good, but it needs a little more build. It felt it felt like real stagnant after a while, and even a subtle build would be nice. Um, but again, you know, it, depending on the references, sometimes the references are pretty um, pretty even keeled. But I think if you wanted to make that more universally commercially viable, some build and some ramp up and more definition between the sections would get that one a lot more consideration for just about anything in the instrumental Caribbean genre. Um, considering you're a world-class session drummer and live drummer as well. Um, I don't know about that, but... Well, you are. I've seen your credits. Come on, don't... Uh, I mean, okay. it's Taxi TV. Don't be so All right, modest. Okay. All right, All right. <laughs> uh, it felt, uh, I, what I enjoyed most about it was it had some imaginative stuff, like adding the banjo sound in there made it, yeah. and it actually worked. It was yeah. kind of cool. I would never think of that in a million years, but it, it was a cool addition to it. But I felt some slop in the rhythm. You mentioned that, but it, at times it was just like, yeah. I felt I like there was two, me, yeah, there were two tracks going at the same time. And so if I were gonna go back and work on that stuff, I would also build in, um, a couple of edit points, which lends itself well to what you're talking about, which is a little too linear. So yeah, build it up, boom, drop it, break it down, build sections. Build. Yeah, you know. but the, the ideas were good though. That's the thing. I don't want to like. It was a good cue. It just needed. It needed. It needs more work. Right. Uh, the idea was great. Uh, the talent is there. Not and quite the ready for. The was was good. I like. Yeah. That banjo in Caribbean. So I want to make a comment about the title of all things. Uh, it's called Ella's Acoustic Caribbean Carnival. Um, I'm pretty sure Ella is either your daughter or your wife possibly, but Ella's name should probably come out of the title just because the Acoustic Caribbean Carnival says it all. And if I'm a video editor working on a TV show and I need a tropical track because we're panning down to the beach and people are down there drinking mojitos or whatever um acoustic caribbean carnival tells you exactly what you're going to get yeah it's nice throwing, organic instrumentation yeah, yeah yeah throwing the name ella in there is just a little bit of a curveball that kind of takes you out of that frame of mind so i don't mean to hurt ella's feelings and ella i hope you're not watching the show with michael yeah. but uh if you are michael said michael said take your name out of the title that's right. And it was me, not him. <laughs> All right. Uh, this one's called Gone Forever, and it's by John N. Granite. Oh, 
<laughs> a couple of comments in the thing saying that you're mesmerized. <laughs> All right. Yeah. What say you, Mr. Mesmerized? Oh, yeah, mesmerized. I look mesmerized. You disabled the comments, so I, I have to trust whatever you say on the comments here. That's right. <laughs> I, I, um, I, I liked the piano m melodic and thematic ideas, but obviously that track needs a lot of work. Um, the strings either sounded dated or clunky to me, and I get in trouble for saying this, and so do the screeners. When we say dated uh, or they need an upgrade, one of the things that can be misinterpreted is that the strings need better treatment, okay? Like those strings were played by a keyboard player in keyboard player fashion. Very that blocky. Is not how, very, very clunky and blocky, and that is just not gonna work most of the time. Uh, the strings need to be either played individually, which I recommended. I just was writing somebody an email. I can't remember who it was, but it was the same kind of thing. It was It's not bad, and the quarterly it's fine, and the ideas are fine, and, and the actual composition is okay. But when you're dealing with strings, don't play them like a keyboard player on a keyboard. Play them separately. Um, you know, maybe record your violins first, your violas second, your cello, celli, your bass, and then maybe separate them into first and second violins and pan it accordingly and treat it by section. There's all sorts of stuff you could do with EQ, compression, and reverb to make even marginal sounding synth strings sound like an actual orchestra. So if you put the effort into that, you can get away with strings that might not be East West or Vienna or whatever the latest program is. That's the best thing ever because I've gotten pro I've gotten string tracks from those top of the line string libraries where they're played by a keyboard. And, and then one of the screeners says, you know, the string treatment's really bad. You know, it's real clunky and it, it, it's yeah. not, it's not bad. It's just the approach needs to be modified. And um, you know, that track that we just heard also needs a little bit of, adjustment composition like I, I didn't hear a clear goal in mind with that track like what's that supposed to score um it was a little repetitive the ending was anticlimactic that that one needs a little bit of an overhaul uh, but i would keep those piano thematic lines and maybe even some of that chordal movement because there was some there was some good good ideas in there that could be expanded upon and built on properly but the main thing that that I would address first is the way you approach those strings. If you're going to do a string, you know what somebody could do um, if there's a moderator doing this on our side is pull up some of the forwards from a recent piano strings listing. And I'm sure the forwards sound pretty good. Um, so I don't know, maybe maybe a sad strings and piano listing that rings a bell, something like that. If we could pull up the forwards that you can hear some of but the forward the problem is but the time it would take us to track down the member and get oh, permission right. to play it on youtube and gotcha yeah, okay so. but they can go on the website right and look at it yeah uh they yeah can. just they could just literally go to the forward section of the forum and and Do look that. at um and then uh i forget what the maybe liz would know um yeah i don't know the listing that's what i'm saying just go on the taxi forwards but, blog and find that and right get a better idea of what i'm talking about you know um I felt that that piece sounded like a score. It sounded like a score for an indie drama film and like they just took the score and tried to make it a cue. It, yeah. it, it, Which is not a bad idea. You just got to you got to be more concise with what the objective is there. I didn't I, I kind of when I'm listening to stuff I kind of want to hear how it's going to be used and I couldn't hear it with that one. Right. Um okay. Next one is called Drown in the mud and this is by douglas scott knight
what nice say you? There. Yeah, I mean that one. That one has everything you need for kind of a swamp rock, uh, southern rock, you know, kind of Louisiana, kind of almost Cajun type listing. Um, really nicely produced, really good guitar work, really great sounds. Um, I cheated and looked at the waveform on this while we were listening, and there's a beautiful <laughs> edit point right at 58, uh, at 58 seconds, which is a wonderful writing technique. Um, I've shared that many times, either on Taxi TV or other podcasts I've done about this kind of thing. But as a really strong, um, attractive thing to music supervisors to have some sort of edit point right at 58 or 59 seconds. Um, I thought the duration was really good on this. Let me, let me see what it is. It was I'm a just minute, like, I'm not listening to it here. A minute but, 38. Yeah, see that, that was really good. It was, it was to the point, it had a nice groove. I would have made the ending a little bit bigger, but I'm really splitting hairs. Like that one, I think had a nice universal appeal that I could hear underscoring a lot of different situations. And you hear it and you know right away, oh wow, it would be good for this, it'd be good for this, it'd be good for this. So really strong commercial viability with that one. I would I would venture to say that one is a pretty, obviously we can't say what's a forward and what's not, because we I can't predict what the listing is and we all know right. every listing's different. So don't, don't go and say, Craig said this was a forward. I'm not saying that. I know. That's um, always the, the fear when we do yeah, these shows. I really Craig said it was a forward it. in the right yeah. context. It could right. be. Right. It's a forward for uh, a listing with that has a reference that sounds just like that. But that was a very strong cue, in my opinion. I thought it had everything right. I thought the balance was good. I thought the mix was good. The production was good. I think that cue did everything right. Uh, the duration was nice and concise. Again, I would have made the ending a little bit bigger and with a little bit bigger a bang, but that would not have held that one back at all. I'm I'm a big uh, well, whoever that was, I'm a big fan of that cue. They did a nice job on that one. That was Douglas Scott Knight. Um, nice job, he, Mr. Knight. A, any good. TV show that Mike Rowe hosts, this would be perfect for about exactly. fifty percent. Exactly. That's what I mean. Like you, you hear right away. Oh. This goes there, or uh, yeah. you know, some of these on Animal Planet. I did some stuff for Louisiana Law recently on Animal Planet. A lot of it is that kind of vibe right there, and uh, yeah, really nice job. Uh, that was a good cue. Awesome! Wow, we're making good time. We're gonna have to. Maybe we'll do a little Q and A at the end of this. Yeah, we'll we definitely time. take some questions. That would be great. All right, this one is from Maybe Jeff senior. Cole, also known as the Frustrated Rock Stars. I love that. And it's Did he called. Say that? Yeah, it's, it's, it's his name, AKA the Frustrated no Rock Stars. Huh? No, it's not his title. That's his, his professional name, the Frustrated, frustrated Rock Stars. Good name for a band. And this is called Cop 76.
I can't wait. Lay it on me. <laughs> I'm curious. I actually like the retro sound and stuff. I, I, I mean, those those things are always kind of fun to listen to. I, again, I, I would have a hard time figuring out what to use this one for. And um, I think it was a little repetitive and it went on longer than it needed to. I heard a nice break at 1.30. It was almost like a fake ending. I would yeah. have made that the real ending and ended it right there. And and then worry about making your your more defined sections within that 90 second parameter. It's easier to get it right when you have 90 seconds to two minutes. It's just an easier duration to deal with. You don't have to worry about being too repetitive. Um, like that cue needs to be trimmed down. I, I was showing, I think it's 211. Yeah, right, it's 211. Yep. I mean, and right around whatever that, those hits were at 130. That was a cool thing because the editors could decide which ending to use. Um, I, I like the retro vibe. I kind of know what they were aiming for, but it could have been, it, it, this one needs more instrumentation and it needs to build more and it needs, it needs more of whatever you were going after. I would, the ideas are good. I would just be more bold with them. It sounded like a very timid kind of production to me. It's uh, it's funny. It took me a minute till somebody brought it up in the chat room, uh, cop 76. And okay, it's a cop show from 1976. That was the the era that they were going. Kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. I yeah. yeah. Um, I heard that. And there was definitely some of that stuff in there. The wah wah yeah. guitar, very. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but there were also some modern sounds in there that I felt like the the bottom end synth, or not the bass synth, but there was another like a sawtooth wave synth in there that just took it out it was doing nicely as a retro piece and that came along and i went oh which is it so yeah. uh, you know not a major faux pas but another case of like heading in the right direction getting a lot of stuff right just needs yeah. fine tuning you know pulling up some of those that early mike post stuff is not a bad idea i mean that is not a bad way to do things find something you like from a 70s tv show like chips or something did mike post do that one of those early Mike Post shows. Uh, Hill, I don't uh, Hill Street Blues. Yeah, well, definitely his... that. Um, yeah. Um, but, like, I remember because it always had a big car chase in it. It always had a motorcycle chase. And some of that was pretty string and retro heavy. I mean, that's not a bad thing to cop ideas from. So, that, again, the ideas were good, but you just got to make it more obvious what we're going to what we're gonna do that or what you're going to submit it for. Yeah, and that weird ending. It's like he, he had the ending already there and then tacked on another piece to make it a little longer. And, yeah. and that made that first ending appear to be some sort of weirdly false ending. And it had a fade within the ring out and right. then came back on the downbeat. So that was like, whoa, right. what, what was that? Yeah, so. and, and it didn't really, we didn't hear anything new uh, being added at, from 130 to 211. So, I mean, if you're going to do that, take it, take it bigger, add some horns and some more, you know, I don't know. But um, I mean, two eleven is not the end of the world. That's not a bad duration either. Right. This felt longer than it needed to be. This felt like you could have said everything you needed to say in ninety seconds to me personally. So. Uh, speaking of chases, I think you said chase or car crash or something. Uh, yesterday I saw the new um, Tom Cruise movie. Uh, oh, really? I haven't seen it. Why can I not think of the title? Dear God, that's all I've uh -huh. seen. Huh? Yeah, Top Gun, whatever the rest of the title is. Maverick something or other, yeah. I didn't love the first Top Gun. I didn't dislike it. It's just like, it's okay, it, you know, it was cool, but it wasn't, like, life-changing. This one blows the first one out of the water. It's so much better. I've heard everybody likes it, but I haven't seen it yet. I mean, I, it wasn't really on my list of things to do, to be quite honest with you. I'm looking forward to taking my daughter to see the Jurassic movie that comes out. Like that's, yeah. That's I'm more interested in that because I can go with her. But, uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, the Top Gun thing. But uh, everybody that's seen it has loved it and said it's great. So I've Yeah, I was actually – I some friends of ours called, and I said, yeah, whatever. You know, I, I figured I'd catch it on uh, Netflix someday. You know, I wasn't, like, inclined to go to the movie theater. But, sure, why not? And all of us walked out of there going, holy crap, that was yeah. really good. That's what everybody's been saying. It's really good. So I don't know. Maybe I will go, go see it. Interesting thing, though. In the beginning of the movie, Tom Cruise um, comes on on the camera just by himself sitting in a chair. And basically, you know, it took us decades to make this movie. And a lot of work went into it. Um, 
all the scenes where you see the actors in the jets with their faces going like that, that's because we actually went up in yeah, jets. Yeah. yeah, really experienced the I G-Force. I saw a on how they made it one day. Yeah, yeah. It was really uh, and, and by the way, the um, Tom Cruise taking James Corden up in the two planes, there's like a half-hour video floating around somewhere of that. That's hysterically funny. I saw a clip I, of it. I didn't see the whole thing, but yeah. I had no idea that Tom Cruise could actually fly, so yeah. yay Tom for that. Yeah. Um, but why was I telling you about... Uh, was the oh, music crap. good or something? Why did you... Oh, I'm trying no, to... I mean, the music was great. Uh, it was one of the few movies where I didn't pay much attention to the music because the action was wow. so intense. Yeah, because uh, I'm working here now, I just I hone in on the... I hear the music in everything now, like all those TV shows. Like, I'm really into Bosch right now. I've been watching that. I think it's... I mean, it's the script isn't great, but it's they have some great shots of L.A. They make our city look beautiful. And uh, the music yeah. is always listening to jazz. And they have a... What season are you on? Whatever the new one is, Legacy oh, okay. just came out. Yeah, I haven't started watching that yet, but uh, Liz just told me about it the other day. All right, moving on here. This is called Discovering the Body, another great title. You know exactly yeah. what kind of music you're going to hear. Yeah. This is Good. from Richard Good Rock. Crime scene music. Here we go. Yep, Richard Rock, Discovering the Body. I'm dying of curiosity to know what you thought. Well, as we both said, what a great title, like right out of the gate, you've already, you know, you've already told me what it's about. And then you fulfilled that, the title by making it a, an investigative, mysterious kind of cue. Um, I loved it for the most part. I loved the, again, there's that edit point at 57, 58 that I love. A little way to play to get in and get out if they only want to use a minute. Very, very good compositional technique there. Subtle but it sounded natural within the tune. It wasn't like, oh God, I forgot to put an edit point. I'll just go insert two seconds of space here. Like, don't ever do that. I see people doing that and that, that'll that wreck a good composition. This was subtle, but it was a good place to get in and get out. Um, the duration was good. The ending was really anticlimactic. Like hmm. you still need to build into that ending a little bit more. Um, I mean, every ending should be something that could end a scene on every song, every cue. Right. Ever because why not people say well they're just going to use a portion of it well why not aim a little higher than that? it's such a defeatist attitude we'll just have them use the first 15 seconds why not make the whole thing good so they can use all of it you get if you get more sync time you get more back end i i've typed that in i just copy and paste it into the responses now well if they only use 15 seconds how come all two minutes has to be good why start out with a c plus you know why not just finish it like that whole cue was really good I thought I really liked it, but the ending was like, oh, is it over or is it? I mean, let me know that it's over. Resolve the ending somehow. Um, and I know you've done 
10 or 20 taxi TV episodes on how to write an ending just since I've worked here. So <laughs> I can't even imagine like how many there are total or on YouTube outside of that. But guys, you've got to make these endings a little more definitive. Um, it separates the men from the boys or the pros from the amateurs. Like all the people that do this professionally, every single thing they submit has a great ending, has a great coda, some great finality, a great conclusion to it. This was a pretty great cue with a pretty, with an ending that could be a lot better. Um, I don't know if it would have held it back. Again, that would depend on the references. I liked the cue. I thought it had a lot of good stuff. It had a nice subtle beginning. It had some good elements that came in halfway through that you only, I mean, there was a lot of really cool things that happened within that cue that were very good, but I don't know, you know, if I was a real, if I was like some of these A-level libraries that we deal with now, and you give it to a supervisor and they say, oh, it's a great cue, but I can't use that to end a scene. So sorry. Now you've just, you know, you yeah. like void two minutes of a very good and worthy composition by not spending an extra few minutes making sure the ending can end a scene, you know? So it almost matters more to an editor what how it opens and how it ends are really important to them. And uh, Laurel Ostrander, who's my favorite editor to talk to about music cues with um, said, you know, think of it as punctuation, which I've always said. Sometimes you end with a period, other times you end with That's an right. exclamation point, but you always end with something definitive. Obviously, you, over, yeah. yeah, you're not going to end, you know, a string quartet on an exclamation point most of the time because it's going to be a little delicate for that. But, uh, you know, something like this. You know, this is a good example of an in-betweener. It's not big and bombastic like an action right. cue that's going to end with a big exclamation point. But still, you could... So what's going on? They've discovered a body. Boom. End with yeah, a big scene. growly bass yeah. note. You know, something that says this is the end. On to the next scene. Yeah. I mean, I, I can't say it would hold it back, but boy, you know... When we when you see the listings here that say A list library, then I think, oh, these guys, you got to be nails with this. You got to hit all the criteria, not just most of it. Yeah. You know, like, just, I mean, you you've said it. Scroll back through some older taxi TV episodes where you guys discuss endings because um, that one needs it. All right, this one is called So Sweet, and it's by Martin Schrader. M A R T I. JN Martins Schrader. I don't know. I'm sorry I'm butchering your name anyway. Your right. song is so sweet, or your track is so sweet.
I want to hear what you what you have to think about this one. All right. Um, first of all, I would listen to five minutes of just the percussion on that. I love that distorted, shakery snare thing, whatever it was. Just I, that literally made me want to go. See you later. I'm heading off to the studio. Go make a record with that. I loved it. Um, the bass part was cool. Felt like it was missing. It, it was normally I'm a fan of less is more. That one needed a pinch more uh, in the bass part, but I like the feel of it. Like the wah wah guitar. Loved the road sound. It was like a cross between a Dynamite Rhodes from like the late '70s um, and and what was it? RMI. Uh, what was the other kind of very popular? A whirly. It was like a combination. Oh, a whirlitzer, yeah. yeah, it was like a, a Wurlitzer slightly combined with a Dynamite, uh, which was a very hopped up Rhodes back in the late 70s. Bee Gees used them on a lot of their stuff. Um, and then all of a sudden, you and I looked at each other. Th this weird synth came out of nowhere at the end. It's like, you didn't need that, and where the hell did it come from? And then the ending was just like, ah! You had me at hello, and then you left me at goodbye. <laughs> yep. Almost all those same notes I want to echo. I love that the way the Fender Rhodes or the Whirlitzer or the Electric, whatever. How yeah, that whatever was. it was. There were some really great things happening in that track. Uh, this is also too long. I mean, as we know, like most yeah. instrumental tracks are between 90 seconds and two minutes. This one was clearly over. Is this so sweet? Is that what we just heard? Yes, and it was 245. 245, yeah, that's too, that's probably just, it's just more than you're going to need. It's too long. Just make a really effective 90 second to two minute cue for instrumentals. Why? Because that's the thing that we see the most. Like two minutes will work for almost all instrumental submissions that I've seen. It's not a, uh, you know, a hard and fast rule, but it's a good duration to work with. 245 is a little long. Um, you could do a lot with that cue. Like, I, I mean, Right now, it sounds almost a little smooth jazz to me, um, which isn't bad if it's a smooth jazz listening. That's great. But honestly, you could – I love that rhythm track and that groove. I thought it worked, uh, again, over a much mm -hmm. shorter duration. But the other thing you could do with that one is probably strip out that rhythm track altogether and go more of a neo-soul sound um, yep. with everything that was on top of it. And not because I didn't like the jazz thing. I love it, actually. But – I definitely think you're going to find more commercial viability with a neo soul track with that cool Fender Rhodes and that that bass sound and that and you know again I would strike that synth that came in at the end too I heard that and I wrote that down I was like whatever that is let's it's not bringing in anything um, yeah but again if you shorten this to 90 seconds two minutes right nice ending you know maybe think about converting this to more of a neo soul track find some cool neo soul drum loops and and, and massage that a little bit that'll give this a little bit more viability um because I, I i thought the melodic content the changes were, were cool i thought there's some really cool stuff happening there um but then it kind of went on longer than it needed to and it got again when you add that extra 45 seconds at the end that you don't really need it it, it creates this sort of idea that it's being repetitive even if it's really not it's just too long and we've already heard that and you don't need it so get rid of it and and you're gonna increase your chances for it to be useful to somebody else you know I have a feeling that uh, Martine, I, I, I still don't know exactly how to pronounce your name, so please forgive me for that, but I have a feeling uh, he may not be here. He may be sleeping. He may be in Europe and, and sleeping right now. When you watch this when you wake up, because I know that's the very first thing you're going to want to do, even before you have your coffee or brush your teeth, it's like watch Taxi TV. Here what we have to say about his cue. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, you have to email Liz at taxi.com and tell me how you got that percussion sound. Did that sample just sound like that? And what's the name of it? Where do I find yeah. it? Because I loved it. Or did you do something to an existing sound to bastardize it and make it sound that cool? But I'm telling you, I, I could listen to an entire record of like Neo Soul, you know, I don't drink that much, but I would have a glass of wine with this. Yeah, like, that turn, would be turn the lights down. A glass of wine and put that on. Yeah, no, definitely. Yep. Well, the Fender Rhodes, like I'm, you know, I have it on all my records and stuff. I just, I'm a big fan of that sound. So, yeah, works for me. Awesome. Okay, moving on. The next one is called Spaz Fusion, and it's by. Oh, wait, is there one? Hold on, that's not what I have next. I have. Oh, uh, you're right. You're right. You're right. Blissful Skies by Owen Gretsch. Yeah. 
Sorry, Spaz, you're going to have to wait. Yeah, one <laughs> I, more song. I spazzed out. All right, this is Blissful Skies by none other than Owen Gretsch. That one was cool. I'm 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 not I'm laughing because I you know what I actually that actually sounds like something that could be in one of those drug commercials, you know? Like where, <laughs> Oh, you mean not not like um illicit drugs, but you mean yeah, no, something no, like, drugs, like you know uh <laughs> Flexator that cures the skin rash, but but I was but while I was listening, I was thinking of all the disclaimers that they put at the end, you know, like hey, we'll get rid of this skin rash, but you're gonna lose your hearing, your eyesight, you have diarrhea for a week and you might have stomach cancer. You lose your hair. I don't know. Like, you know Pardon like, me for going for this one, but I've got a. I saw it over the weekend, and I literally had snot and tears. It was, it, I've <laughs> never paid any attention to it, but there's one called Bent Carrot, uh, TV commercials showing a bunch of regular carrots that you would what, eat. Is it like it, a TV commercial or something. Uh, it's for yeah, uh, men who have a, a bend where it shouldn't be. But I, I don't know why they even put those on TV. I don't want you know like my six year old kid saying, right. "Daddy, what what is right. this about?" I think you know I don't mean to be so prudish, but it, one of the things at the end, I was kind of like doing a little work on my laptop, sitting on the couch, and I had that on in the background, wasn't paying attention, and all of a sudden I hear the words penile fracture. And I'm thinking if, that, if that, that's one of the potential things that could happen to you if you take this drug to fix that bent carrot syndrome, it's like I'd rather have the bent carrot than the penile right. fracture any day of the week. Right. <laughs> uh, and the list, of, the list of, this, of, of the side effects that these yeah. drugs cause is worse than like wow, right. this, little, this little bug bite that I can't get rid of. I don't want to lose my hearing and have diarrhea for a week. <laughs> It's like, but anyway, that, that music just it reminded me. I was just, I was thinking of like, you know, people like, oh, people who take Plexator or whatever, they can, they, <laughs> you can go, they can go swimming the next day. And I was just picturing all this in my head. And then, the, and then I started thinking about disclaimers, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> you can actually, you should, uh, there are companies, all they do is get paid to come up with names for pharmaceuticals. Yeah. Uh, oh, I should do uh, that. It, yeah. It's like a half a million bucks and up to get a name really? for a pharmacy. Yeah. You I should. I got to get a resume to those people. Yes, you uh, do, because you're very talented. Drummers make. <laughs> um, 
But yeah, no, I actually liked the composition. I mean, if you see a, a drug ad on Taxi, like if we're pitching for a drug advertisement, submit that because uh, I could see that behind, you know, people. You know, can't you just hear somebody talking over that? Oh, yeah. It's, oh, it's you know, pleasant. It, it's positive without being right? overly positive. It's right. pleasant without being boring. It's right. friendly. It makes you be happy you're alive with it. It's yeah. not too much of anything. It's just right, says Goldilocks. Right. I thought I thought it was pretty good. Let me see. I didn't I didn't look at the duration because I actually thought whatever it was. It was uh, two twelve. Okay, so you might want to trim a few seconds off of it, but again, not something. I love that there's also. I heard the three sections on there, and then I was like, boy, I, I went and looked at it, and you can see them too, which is really good to have like three nicely defined sections with something a little bit different in each each one bigger than the next that had a nice natural build to it. Um, it was, it was not busy, which, which is cool to talk over again. I was, I was hearing it in a, you know, drug, a pharmaceutical commercial in my mind. So I'm hearing somebody talk over it. It was a sparse enough melodic theme that you could talk over it, but there was also some other stuff where it was less busy that, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I thought again, accurately pitched with pitch accuracy. I think that really could find a home. That one, that one seemed to me to have a nice universal appear, and I apologize for laughing, but I was laughing at my own stupid mind how it works when I hear those <laughs> disclaimers at the end of the drug commercial. Yeah, yeah, laughing, you know. Peter Rahill said this episode's not going to make it through the PG filter on no. YouTube, but but you know, in truth, it's on on television, right. You know, all we're doing is repeating something. I'm a little amazed that it's on television, personally. I mean, not maybe offended, but a little amazed. Um, I, I want to throw one little thing out there. This is the, the retired engineer in me, but uh, I almost heard what sounded like tape flutter from back in the day on the guitar. Some of the more sustained notes. The guitar is very compressed, which was done on purpose, and it added to the coolness, like the bell-like tone of those notes, which was a good thing. But I could hear just this little fluttery sound in the guitar, and I'm not sure if that was intentional processing. Uh, I'm pretty sure that Owen probably didn't do this like on a TAC eight-track half-inch or anything. So. Uh, just curious. I'm going to play a little bit of it. Listen carefully. It's like yeah. the, the guitar that's doing the solo-y stuff. Not bad. You know those the, uh, the the tape simulator the plugins, the tape simulator. Oh, plugins that's are, right. Are really amazing. I I I'm, okay. I, I use the UA stuff. I love the. Uh, I have the UA. I want to say the Studer A800, if I'm not mistaken. If that's one yeah. of the plugins, I think that's what I use. And and the presets alone are amazing. Again, I don't do a whole lot of my own mixing anymore because I, you know, I'd rather stay on the on the producing side. But when I have to. Um, and for something like this, I mean, sometimes that tape simulation is just like a magic thing to add to your track, you know, can, it can warm it up, give it that nice analog sound, especially if you're really good at it, which I am not, I stick to the presets, but I know that the tape simulators are very, very good. Now the plugins are very, very, the algorithms are amazing. There was a famous mastering engineer in LA that I'm sure is still working, uh, very much in demand. And one time there was a, a taxi band that got a record deal was having their stuff mastered and their manager was in town uh, but they asked me if i would go being that i was an engineer to the mastering session i'm like okay i don't want to make decisions on your record you know i'm not really empowered with that but sure i'll go so uh the mastering engineer waited for everybody else to clear out of the room and he said i'm only telling you this because you're a fellow engineer, but here's how I get my famous sound. And all he did was take the output of whatever machine was playing. In that case, I believe it was a DAT back then. He's playing the DAT, going into the input side of an Ampex closed loop, reel to reel, okay. quarter inch, and coming back out. He was just literally sending it through the electronics, not even over the tape heads. It wasn't 
He wasn't rolling any tape on that Ampex machine, just using the input side of the electronics and right, right back out again. And it was amazing. He would do an AB and bypass it, and it was 20% better just from having that machine. And it wasn't a particularly old machine. It was like a 1979 to 85-ish vintage machine. Now, were you but, in an actual mastering studio, or were you just in a normal control room? I was in a mastering studio, a room that yeah, built just Yeah, mastering studios used to be, at least when they were physical rooms, they were very different from control rooms. I've been in a few, not many, but yeah. I think Ron Baust, did mas Ron Baust did mastered my first CD, and we went to an actual mastering room, and I was like, it wasn't the first time I had been in there, but like it, it was, it, the room is built differently, and um, yeah. the way those guys do it, they're well, well worth the extra added expense of having a separate engineer master your thing. Yeah, it's, it's really really worthwhile yeah actually. although i wouldn't recommend dropping hundreds of dollars to master an instrumental cue that's going to go no, not a cue but i mean right. I was doing uh, like an actual record yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 mastering rooms and mastering engineers they're a different breed of engineer there are some yeah, regular yeah. engineers that have crossed over into mastering or do both but for the most part you're better to get a set of ears on the project that's never heard it before can come in with complete objectivity and you're right their rooms are smaller Mm -hmm. um, usually f somewhat deeper than maybe a regular yep. control room. Exactly, yep. um, and they'll have like four or five sets of monitors in there, and they really work hard to tune the rooms and get those monitors positioned perfectly, more so than even top-of-the-line recording studios. Yep. And, yeah, you walk in the room and you listen to playback and go, wow, it already sounds better. And the, and the mastering engineer will look at you and go, I'm not doing anything yet. <laughs> yeah. Just because the rooms yeah. sound so good. All right, now we are on to Spaz Fusion. This is by none other than Mr. Ken Mesford. Let's have a listen. No, you know, no, I want you. All right. uh, you know, I, I love the originality, like especially the first few seconds of that. I really liked the direction, like the just like going for it on the guitar, like, hey, we're just going to play, you know, like, um, which is fun to listen to and it's fun to play like that. But I'm not sure how useful that would be if it wasn't like actually being played to a picture. That It just sounds to me like that needs more composition all the way around. Um, 
it, it sounded very improvised to me. I liked the lines, I liked the playing, I liked the guitar sound, but it sounded very spontaneous to me. It didn't sound like there was a specific goal in mind with that one either. Um, you know, the guitar cues that we have or that we get requested for most of the time are very, they have a specific theme that they need, whether it's guitar swagger or 80s rock or 70s rock or just rock in general. Um, that that needs that needed more thematic content, more composition, more layering, and I also think the accompanying rhythm track. If you're going to do that style, you need like more of a live sound. The the canned drum loops or whatever those were weren't weren't really effective in that setting to me. Um, I, again, I think more composition would help. The guitar playing was great. I thought the sounds were good too. Um, you know, nothing wrong there, but it, it, it lacked direction for me. And again, I don't, let me see what the duration was. It, it felt a little long, but Two thirteen. Uh, no. Okay. So the, it, it just, it needs to build more to the end too. And then that ending too, it's like, okay, shut the track off. I'm going to end it with just a guitar. Well, again, <laughs> again, a little more, you see what I'm saying? Like, again, more honey, it's more. time for dinner. Okay. Be right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, right, right, I'm done with this cue, you know? I, it, the playing is good, so you can't you obviously can't say anything bad because the, the person playing is obviously quite accomplished. But a little more organization, I think, and build into an ending and have the bass and the drums and maybe keyboard or another layer of guitar end with you so the ending is bigger. Don't just be like, it's almost like you hit the space bar and shut off the accompaniment. And go, I got it from here. I'll end it. I got it. But it's Prince Spaghetti Day time for dinner. Yeah. Um, I mean, listen, that might see some placement just because of the originality and the uniqueness of it, especially like the first 30 seconds of that. I thought I was like, wow, this is, you know, it was cool. Like it, it painted like this cool atmosphere thing. Once the groove kicked in and it got a little repetitive and lost me there, but definitely some cool ideas too, you know? So, I mean, what do I know? I mean, the, the originality of that alone might get it somewhere, you know? Um, I agree with you on much of what you said. I look at, Oftentimes, I look at cues, and the first thing I think of is, how would an editor use this? Um, how much would it get used? Because library owners don't just look at music and go, oh, that's a really good cue. They look at it and go, that's a really good cue that several of my clients could use, so therefore it has right. a prob high probability of earning income. They go beyond just the quality of the music. It's all right. about the, the usability and the sales ability of it. And I couldn't come up with too many... Um, scenes in my head that this would be used for but one i came up with was somebody gets drugged at a at a club in their drink and they get up to head to the men's room or ladies room and as they're walking you know the walls are starting to waver and melt and they're stumbling a little bit this is like okay the drug is working its way through your body and you're about to fall on your face uh, that was the only use case scenario i could come up with so nice going ken <laughs> We're back on drugs again. Come up yeah, with a name here. for that drug. Cues, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And, and great guitar playing. Great sounds. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm curious to know if you were playing a PRS and what if you were playing it through, uh, you know, an amp sim or if that was actually... Nobody plays through amps anymore, sadly, but... Uh, yeah, drug the being the, good now. Yeah, yeah. I mean amazing all right moving on this one i love the title i'm not sure what to expect from it but it's a cool title you make me sick <laughs> and this is by pedro marin <laughs> Thank you. 
What are you well, thinking? It seems like kind of an almost like it's trying to be an action trailer or a, a dramatic trailer kind of thing, maybe. Is that what you heard? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I and it also looking at the wave. You've got you've got th three nice acts there, which is the right idea. But the middle act, the last two kind of they just need more build. They need they need to be more different from the first one, or there needs to be more more build and more build in the, in the second and third thing. And that ending needs to be huge. Um, if that's the intended goal, I don't know if it's supposed to be an action sequence or an action trailer type of thing. Um, I thought the sounds were good and I liked the pulsing synth and the strings. I thought, I thought the sounds were all really good. Um, but definitely at least in the third one. And I, again, I, I would like to hear some more densely, populated orchestration in that third act like to finish it out there's room to get a lot bigger with that one um add some you know counter lines um and take it someplace in that third act so that it, it gives a sense of build and urgency um yeah i don't know if i'm sorry i didn't want to cut you no off. i i i I'm, again i I'm caught in between two uses for that. It's not quite as cinematic to be a trailer, to be a, an action type trailer. And it needs to be more refined if it's gonna be like for a, a TV show cue kind of thing. So I don't know, it's kind of caught in between two places in my mind. Yeah, if it was intended to be trailer material, it. I think it was Random Purcell and somebody else, two people in the relatively recent past on Taxi TV have both mentioned, if you think it's big enough, it's not, make it bigger. Um, yeah, and and this, yeah, this felt like it walked up to the line and it was missing that last right. thing that just made you go, holy crap. You know, especially just, in two and three, especially like halfway through the end. And the duration, yeah. there was a lot of good things. That's why I don't... I want to try to bring out the good things like the, i thought the sounds were, were really good and i thought the theme was really good and i think the duration was really good too i wasn't bored with that at all i just right. kept waiting for like the knockout punch and it didn't get there and and that could be okay too because sometimes they just want things to simmer and they don't want it to be bombastic but i don't know i it just it it it, it didn't it have felt like identity. it wanted it felt right. like it wanted to be you know right. it, kind, it didn't have enough kind. of identity to get where it needed to be it's so. like a, a racehorse that yeah. um, that the jockey's not riding hard enough around the track. You know it can do more for right. whatever reason it's not. Yeah. But yeah, it was a good, good piece. More build in the second and third acts would definitely help that. Um, but again, you know, find a reference that, that you like and that, that you can um, not copy. You don't ever do that. But you can digest and incorporate some of the elements that make those kind of cues attractive. One of them is more build in the second and third acts. All right, this one is called World Shaker. It's by Nico J Jasnowitz, AKA Atlas Architect. Interesting name. Whoops.
Any thoughts? Yeah, but you're the guest. <laughs> okay. All right, all right, all right. All right. Uh, I mean, again, I, I thought there was really good ideas in that one too, but it, it still it still is kind of lacking the organization it needs. And it had some cool compositional elements, so I don't want to say it lacked composition because it certainly most did not. Uh, I love the drum intro on kind of the second act there, but it felt long and it didn't really – it felt independent of the second act. It didn't get built on or tied into somehow. It was like this – cool drum thing but then it i think this 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 track needs more cohesiveness altogether like i think you need to build it around a central theme and then add some variation and build on it um the waveform looks cool i mean you can kind of you can kind of see three acts there I, three minutes is a little long but maybe not for a trailer not, it's, not it's, for it's a trailer three minutes for a trailer most of them now say two to three minutes but again, I would like to see more th three defined sections that 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 flow nicely into each other, where there's a recap and a, and um, you know it has certain th like there's a there's that big section at the end which is cool, but it feels like bang we went right there we didn't ease into it or or it, it, you could use some more production effects in that too that could use some more cinematic hits some more swells, um, some more edit points for a trailer to be quite honest with you, um, and again there's ways to do that you should watch a separate taxi tv episode uh, episode to talk about the three act trailer structure and really incorporate more of those ideas into this and then as soon as you learn the rules then it's okay to kind of break them and branch off and learn how to be different but this once you become an expert at the rules yeah once you just be learning them you can learn them in three minutes to become expert at them takes a while right um but yeah it sounds to me like that one needs a little more cohesion it needed some more cinematic effects it needed a bigger it needed a better transition into that big section like you had all the elements are there like all right. the, all the things are there it's got some good thematic ideas some good composition but it just feels to me like it wasn't quite where it needs to be as far as arrangement goes um to me compositionally i could see real promise in there uh, it's like wow Absolutely. this person really gets composition yeah. understands yeah. what a trailer is supposed to do really um emotionally grabs you all that good stuff what the hell was going on with the compression oh my gosh uh it literally sounded like a bad tape transfer um yeah. so a little. Yeah. yeah i mean it, it was i kept asking myself is it distorted for a reason is he hitting the compressor that hard for a reason is it somebody who really understands composition but doesn't know enough about engineering yet i don't know but I would take that one and put it up on the peer-to-peer -peer section of, of the Taxi Forum mm -hmm. and get some of your fellow members who are maybe further down the road on an engineering or mixing side. Maybe somebody would donate a little time as a favor and take that and uh, maybe do a couple edits and then remix it for you and see how it goes. But there's real promise in there. You know what you're doing compositionally and you're well down the road. All right, you know what, I'm glad you brought up that peer-to-peer -peer section on the website too, because yeah, I feel like that's a very underutilized skill for, or I'm sorry, a, a very underutilized tool for a lot of people that are making mistakes that are pretty much avoidable that are out there that can be spoken and fixed. Like you can find stuff on the peer-to-peer -peer review or putting stuff up there, and people can tell you things like that where you don't have to, you don't even really necessarily need a lot of music ability. To understand some of those things that would be easy to grab from this cue like hey this needs more cinematic effects this needs some reverse effects you need better transitions into act two and three like that can be spoken that's something you could pull off the forum and there are some we have some amazing a-level composers in our stable right now that are submitting trailers and stuff i mean the forwards that we've been getting the last few weeks in the trailer style have been unbelievable so uh you know the screeners are saying good stuff the members are taking it to heart and they're making improvements that are audible to us that are audible to your clients michael our clients um and and they're appreciative and and it's going to generate money it's it's the ultimate goal is being reached um so for everybody that's tuning in on here hit those taxi forums and make use of it it's a it's free it doesn't cost anything it's not a custom critique Put it up there and maybe some of the people that are really doing well and getting forwarded for the um yeah. trailer style listings will chime in and help you out and you'll get some some really professional guidance 
Absolutely. It's at forums with an S dot taxi dot com. Yes. All right, let's move on to the next one because we're running out of time and I've still got several to go. I've got one, two, three, four, five more to go. and We've got 15 minutes. Um, all right. Let us listen now to Is This Really Me by Paul Hill. <laughs> Nice, easy, <laughs> no, no, I liked it. Nice, easy, two beat kind of underscore. Um, you know, non intrusive. You could talk over it. Might be good for another drug commercial. We can pick a different name for a drug this time. Um, uh, it, it was uplifting. You know, like hey, right after you take our drug, you can go for a walk on the beach. I hear uh, that. That was very nice. Um, a couple notes about it. Obviously, the ending again, very anticlimactic. Like the ending needs to be bigger. Put a bigger chord there. Layer. Have it, all the instruments should end together. Um, normally I write on here that that intro was too long and make it, you know, four bars instead of 16. This one sounded like there was no intro. It was like, bang, here's the song. And, and that's okay too. But I think in this particular case, like maybe two or four bars to lead into the thing might've been nice, like more than whatever was there. Um, more defined sections would help more build would help, but that said, this kind of had a nice, happy, uplifting underscore quality to it that I could hear somebody talking over. So I don't want to say too much because obviously, depending on the listing, if it, if if a listing called for upbeat, guitar driven or organic instrumentals for a drug commercial, that might be a good submission. You know, uh, the duration, I think, sounded good to me. About two minutes. What was it? Yeah. Two oh six. Yeah. Good. Yeah. All good there. Um, more defined sections, regardless. And again, you don't have to rebuild the Great Wall of China, but like make some <laughs> obvious sections there. Like, again, that's not supposed to be a trailer. We don't need three arcs with big cinematic hits and reverse effects, but give us something you can. And, and here's where we get into problems, too. You can you can stay centered around a single theme and still have defined sections without getting too repetitive. Um, it's possible. I've heard members do it. This one is close. I think it needs a little bit more massaging to get where it needs to be but I could hear it as underscore. All right. Um, next up, we have John Allen's piece, and this is called Be on the Lookout, B-E-E, -E, on the Lookout. Let's have a listen.
That was weird. What, what, what I accidentally. Okay. That was me accidentally hitting the taxi TV theme music when I went to hit oh, the okay. applause button. Um, right. Go ahead, lay it on me. We got to pick up our pace. We got nine minutes. Right, and we got like four more that, to go. That one was too repetitive. It just it needs more construction and more more um, composition all the way around. Um, it, the whole thing sounded like an intro. Um, it, it wasn't. What's there isn't bad. But you kind of fuse some sort of hip hop drum sounds with with orchestral strings, which done in the proper setting is a very cool idea and it could work. But either bring the groove in or don't like the groove kind of dabbled here and there in like a non musical. It sounded exper yeah, it sounded experimental. It's like, oh, right. here's here's a cool thing like the string line. OK, right. that showed real promise, but repeated. Yeah. You know, ad infinitum, and, and then this other stuff. It's like, no, hold on a minute. That's for another cue. Yeah, These two things shall never be married. Exactly. Yeah, it needed that one needs a little more. I think a little more work. Um, definitely, either bring the groove in or don't. Um, if you are gonna be sporadic with it, it needs to be different sounds, not hip hop. If you're gonna go the hip hop with strings direction, bring in a groove and build on it. Um, but what's there is a little too repetitive. It needs a little more. Uh, a little more composition throughout. All right, this one is called Destiny and it's by Don Coyne. <laughs> nothing bad to say about that one obviously that that that's got everything it needs for um for you know an instrumental guitar driven indie rock uplifting kind of vibe uh the only thing that i am noticing though i will say this has not been normal but i would add another 15 seconds to that one at 114 like get that to at least 130 you know i i, I don't i saw one listing in the last six months that said between one and two minutes most of the time it's between 90 seconds and two minutes yeah. So I would add another 15 seconds to that one. I would retitle it. Uh, I think it was a nod. The title Destiny was a nod to Ennio Morricone, uh, one of the greatest composers, you know, who made spaghetti western music mm -hmm. more than famous. I would call it Surf and Spaghetti Western. There you go. Because it, it, it's a combination. Uh, it's got a little bit of Spaghetti Western Marconi mm -hmm. in it. It's also got a surf vibe. So you hear the title, Surf and Spaghetti Western, and you know what you're going to get. Yeah. 
that was a very well put together cue, I thought. Very it nicely was. done. Good job, Just John. the right amount of guitar, um, blended nicely, wasn't busy. It, it, it was good. Yep. All right. Uh, next up is flu <laughs> Fluosity dot h yeah fluosity dot h by eddie mickey okay the title right. needs work that much i know yeah <laughs> Well, that was definitely a uh, a buttoned ending, but <laughs> not a uh, whoo. Um, yeah, it was very blocky and needs a lot of work. It's a, you're off to a good start, Eddie. Um, at least you understand conceptually what an instrumental cue is, but you, there's a lot more pieces to the puzzle. That I think you need to learn. And Craig, yeah, definitely add some bass to that. <laughs> And um, maybe some legato lines to tie everything together a little bit. Everything was very staccato and ba -da -da -da, just very like add some add some some low end, add some pads maybe or strings to tie it together. Um, and I would mess around with some other sounds on that piano too uh, or the keyboard. It could, yeah. just sounds like it could be a little bit more contemporary. But you know, off to a good start. But just listen to some other cues of the like and incorporate some more of those ideas. Again, go into the forward section of the forums and listen to stuff that gets forwarded for listings that you've pitched to and didn't get a forward. And you can also get there by blogs.taxi.com slash forwards, I believe, is the other URL. Um, all right, one more here. This is called A Stroll Down Voodoo Lane, and this is by Matt J. Britton. <laughs>
Well, some nice guitar playing and definitely cool ideas. Um, but I, it felt a little long to me at three minutes. Was that something like 334. that? 334. I think this was yeah. actually a song that the vocal was muted on. Okay. Yeah. Just a guess. Gonna, yeah. If you're going to do that, you got to put some sort of thematic idea in place of the vocal. Um, melody light, I like to call it. Because yeah. if you do the full yeah. melody with an instrument, it sounds like, you know, 101 strings or something. But just like a quarter of the melody to give it some movement. Right, and a lot of the guitar on there was obviously well played. Uh, you know, it sounded great, but it, it was also improvised. And again, if you're going to submit an instrumental cue, they need more composition. Um, and there was also spots there. I don't know, maybe where the vocal was going to be, where there was not much going on. You got to got to fatten it up a little bit with a rhythm guitar or a keyboard line or something to give it a little bit more contour and build. And again, even for something that's what, what you said, three thirty. I, just make a two minute edit of it, Fine. especially if it's done to a click, like you can do that now. It's what digital audio is for. Make a two minute version of that and you could, you know, with, with, with just some engineering, you don't have to replay it, but you could make the track more usable in more than one situation if you have more than one version of it. Um, I agree. I, I Something in the chat, I've got to mention this, even though we're a couple minutes long. Uh, this was one of the funniest moments in 30 years of owning and running Taxi. Probably 15 years ago, the vice president of A&R for, I believe it was Wyndham Hill. Well, uh -huh. Somebody mentioned Wyndham Hill in the chat before, and this reminded me of that moment. Uh, she was screening, and she was moonlighting as a screener at Taxi. I, I can't remember if she's going through a divorce or something, wanted to make some extra cash, whatever. We we're thrilled to have her here. And she was a lovely person, great screener. She went on to be like the VP of A&R at like Sony Classical or something. So this was a woman who knew music uh, and, and moved around in some very lofty circles. And we got a complaint on something she screened saying clearly this person doesn't have any idea what kind of music they listen to at Wyndham Hill. <laughs> and, well, as a matter of fact, you were screened by the vice president of A&R at Wyndham yeah. Hills. So I'm pretty sure she did. Yeah. But that was funny because people, you know, they love to say, oh, your screeners don't know anything. They're probably a bunch of 18-year-olds. Uh, no. Yeah. Well, we not. got one a couple of weeks ago. They said, well, you know, this is this person doesn't know anything about country music in Nashville. And the person screening it was an A&R person in Nashville. So There same, you go. Same, same, same kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you for doing this, Craig. Uh, always lovely to have you on the show. You, yeah, it was you, fun. You, Hopefully the members got something out of it, you know. Yeah, the people made many nice comments in the chat room, and uh, your feedback is always detailed and helpful. You know, yeah, it's actually, one thing to have an opinion. It's another thing to be able to say, try this. It could work out yeah. for you. Yeah. We've um, been working on that with the screeners to try to make sure that the feedback is actionable. It's not just why it didn't work or why it did work. It's like, what does it need to be fixed to get it better shape for next time? You know, it's the whole point. So. Absolutely. And speaking of next time, on next week's show, I'm going to have none other than Andrea Stolpe join me. Um, she is a songwriting coach, I would guess you would say. Um, she was on the show right at the very beginning, I believe, of COVID. Some, it's been a while since she's been on. Anyway, looking forward to that. Um, with that, I want to say goodbye and thank you, Craig Pilo, once again for doing an awesome job. What was fun? The crowd loves you. And I will see you guys next week for another exciting episode of Taxi TV Live. Yeah! Woo. Here comes the fade. <laughs> Keith LeBrant, ladies and gentlemen. Ooh, a little skip in the audio there. <laughs>